Hey everybody, um, I just want to speak with you for just a few minutes about an experience I had almost a year ago to the day. Um, the Lord took me to hell. I was in church, I was up at the altar, and I was praying. All of a sudden, I was no longer in the church. I was hovering, uh, floating in midair inside what seemed to be a volcano and in this volcano all around the walls were paths going up and down in a spiral along the walls and along these paths were craters that were about five foot apart between each of them but they were on either side of the path and in between these craters were small little walkway paths um these craters were overflowing with a red and black substance that was like lava And these craters were so full of people and this lava was just sucking these people down and the, the, it was so full that people were climbing on top of each other trying to get out and reach the side where they could climb out of these craters and as soon as they think that they were able to get out this lava just comes and just grabs it sucks them back down and they have to redo it all over again people's attempts at escape are endless and fail. And the people that were in these craters have the small sins large sins, medium sized sins, and unimaginable sins. And each one used to serve Jesus in some way, shape, or form. They gave their heart to Jesus. They knew Him. They felt Him. But then they turned their back. This is called the outer darkness of hell. <sighs> no one is exempt from hell. No one. <sighs> the tiniest sin can cause a lifetime, lifetime of torture eternal life of torture and torment and undying fire the stench of sulfur inside this place the smell of burning and rotting flesh, the sight of the melting skin coming off of these people every second of every minute of every hour of every day for eternity.
my nose burnt with it. It was so overwhelming. My stomach turned, and it still turns just to think about it. The heat here is a dry heat. It is so unbearable and it's stifling to the point where you can't even breathe. You just can't breathe. It's suffocating. <sighs> the screams of agony and torment of these people. People begging for mercy. And there is no more mercy once you get there. There's no mercy once you get there. None. <sighs> In Revelations 20, 13 through 15, it says, The sea gave up, is dead, and death and the grave gave up their dead. And all were judged according to their deeds. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death. And anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. At the judgment, the books will be opened. The book of life contains the names of those who have put their trust in Christ to save them. These books also contain the recorded deeds of everyone, good or evil. Everyone's life will be reviewed and evaluated. You will not ask, be asked about somebody else's. You will be asked about yours. So those of you who are focusing on everybody else's and try to tell everybody else what they're doing wrong you need to just self evaluate because I'm sure that you can find something that you need to confess Chris I promise you I promise I promise you We will be asked on Judgment Day about our own sins. Have we confessed all of them? Have we lived as if we know that the Book of Life or these books will one day be opened? No one is saved by deeds. But the deeds that you do are clear evidence of your relationship with God. It shows your true heart. Jesus will look how we handled certain situations, opportunities relationships and how we handled our gifts that he has given us God's gracious gift of salvation does not free us from the requirement of faithful 
obedience, and service. Each of us must serve Christ in the best way we know and live each day knowing the books will one day be open. Luke 12, 5, 6. But I'll tell you whom to fear. Fear God who has the power to kill you and then throw you into hell. Yes, he's the one to fear. No one else. No one else. Because I promise you, the least little bit of sin that is in your life is in that book. He knows. He knows what's there. And that could cause you what? Just a little bit of unforgiveness. Just a touch. Just like a mustard seed amount of faith can move mountains. A mustard seed amount of sin can cause you to go to hell. I beg your sins to him get rid of it and confession does not mean that you keep sinning because his grace and mercy can run out he can run out because you take advantage of it First John 1 John 1.9 says, But if we confess our sins to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Confession is supposed to free us so that we can enjoy our fellowship with Christ and ease our conscience and lighten our cares. But as Christians, we sometimes don't understand how it works. We feel guilty that um, we confess that we we feel guilty so that we confess the same sins of our past over and over and over and over, and we wonder if we may have forgotten something because we don't feel that release, we don't feel that lightened load, so to speak. We believe that God forgives us when we confess, but if we died with unconfessed sins, we would forever be lost in this awful, awful place of torture. And if you think the devil is a red man with horns, or ugly creature you are sadly mistaken he's very enticing he's very beautiful that's why he is so deceiving and he uses that he's us he uses that to get you to come to him We must understand that God wants to forgive us. He gave his only son to die. <laughs> he gave his only son to die just so he can forgive us. So that, that it, it, it would be unlimited forgiveness. When we come to Christ, we forgive he forgives all the sins we have committed or will ever commit. This does not mean that you need to confess now and turn around and go back in and sin again. That does not that's not what that means. Because true confession is changed behavior. It it, it is a product 
changed behavior is a product of true, true confession. We don't have to keep confessing the sins of our past. Because once we do it, God erases it. Well, it is no longer. It is no longer tied to us. We should continue to confess our sins so that we can enjoy the maximum fellowship with Him. True confession involves a commitment not to continue to sin. I encourage you. I highly encourage you. Get right with God. Confess your sins. Self-evaluate. Ask the Lord to reveal any sin that is within you. And if you are into witchcraft, sorcery, warlocks, any kind of sat Satanism, there's still a chance for you. There's still a, a good chance for you to get into heaven. Because once you get to hell, and that is where you're going, the devil's not going to give you his kingdom if that's what he's promised you. There's just a special place. That he's going to put you. And he's only going to make fun of you. And he's going to torment you. In ways that. You could never. Imagine. Ever. I promise you. It's not a place you want to be. It's not a place you want to be. And I just want to pray right now for each and every one of you that's watching me. Because this was not easy for me. It took me a year to process all of it. To actually understand it. And he told me it was time. It was time. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, I ask that you touch each person that's watching this video or listening to this video. Allow it to reach those that are in need, Lord. Feel this message with nothing but you, because this message is from you and not of me. Lord God, allow the scales to come off of their eyes. And the ears to get unstopped. Father, we just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching. <sighs>